Hello, and Professor Ibn Auf from the German Islamic University, the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. I will continue my lectures on wound and complications of wound, that is wound and gangrene. This lecture will be on vascular ischemia and gangrene. And the objectives of this lecture is that uh, by the end of this lecture, the student will be able to uh, define embolus and thrombus and describe the causes and clinical features uh, of uh, DVT and treatment of deep venous thrombosis, describe the causes, clinical features of acute and chronic limb ischemia and uh, the treatment. Uh, first, I will start with the Verkau's triad. This is composed of three factors. Causing for causing thrombosis, reduce viscosity, velocity of the blood, and increase viscosity of the blood and endothelial surface injury. The reduced velocity of blood is because of obstruction, whether it's obstruction in the lumen of a blood vessel or in the wall or outside the wall, or in heart failure, all these will reduce the velocity of the blood leading to stasis and thrombosis. Also, the increased viscosity, as in very high white uh, red blood cell count, as in uh, polycythemia, and uh, in white blood cell, high, very, very high white blood cell counts, as in leukemias, and very high platelet count as in uh, thrombocytosis. Also, uh, diabetes, dehydration, and hyperlipidemia will increase the viscosity of the blood. Uh, so the viscosity will increase either due to increase in the blood elements or in the reduction of water or increase in the lipids and sugar of the blood. Also, the cell factor is endothelial surface Injury, and this occurs in either autoimmune diseases, in Berger's disease, or in trauma. Now, what is dry gangrene? The dry gangrene is a desiccated, black, hard, distal part of a limb due to cutoff of the blood supply. And the cutoff of the blood supply is due to either an embolus or thrombus or trauma or neglected tourniquet, like here, the toes are becoming black and desiccated and hard. Now, uh, the difference between embolus and thrombus. In color, arterial embolus is composed of platelets and fibrin, so it looks whitish while venous thrombus is made up of red blood cells and fibrin, so it looks dark red. And uh, stasis, the impulse usually moves with the circulation from one part of the circulation to another circulation, part of the circulation, and lots stops in the bifurcation of a smaller blood vessel, leading to cut of the blood supply distally while the venous thrombosis is clotting of blood inside the vein. The source of the embolus is commonly from the heart, as in atrial thrombus, and in valve vegetations in cases of atrial fibrillation, uh, or from big arteries as atheroma from carotid artery or aorta. The thrombus usually uh, from the deep venous, uh, from the big veins uh, causing uh, in deep venous thrombosis, it might move in the circulation and cause pulmonary embolus, pulmonary embolism PE. In arteriosclerotic elderly patients, thrombosis may occur in the artery because of narrowing of the lumen as one of the Verkau's triad. 
And when the impulse lodges at the bifurcation of the artery, means the circulation has stopped. Uh, it propagates thrombus that the velocity has been very much reduced. The thrombus will propagate thrombus will form behind the embolus. Now, embolism, by the word embolism, we mean a process by which a material embolizes. That is, it moves in the circulation from one part to another. And this material could be blood clot, fat, cholesterol deposits, gas, uh, or tissues of malignancies or foreign material. It moves distally uh, to occlude smaller blood vessels at the site of the purification, uh, bifurcation. Now the symptoms and signs. The embolus usually causes acute limb ischemia or acute ischemia of the organ it lost in, whether it's in the brain or in the limbs or anywhere. This is embolus or in the lung. And it, the symptoms are usually pain, which is severe and continuous. It is ischemic pain. And the part will become limp, let us say limp, will become pulseless and pale and parasitic because of reduction of blood supply to the nerves. And later on, it will become paralyzed because of cut of the blood supply of the nerves. And poikilocermic, that is hypothermia. The limb will become cold. And they later on will be some discoloration, blackish discoloration of the skin of the limb that is skin mottling. However, uh, an embolus also can uh, uh, pass to the lung, and this has got other symptoms. On the other hand, in chronic limb ischemia, which is due to reduced velocity, due to narrowing of the arteriosclerotic vessels, patients usually complain of intermittent pain called colidication, intermittent colidication because of the reduction of the blood supply to the lower limbs. And later on, when the blood supply is severely reduced, patient will complain of rest pain. With the intermittent colidication, the patient goes for a distance. It is called colidication distance. And with time, the colidication distance might get shortened. And later on, the patient will become, uh, will uh, develop breast pain, which is a critical stage. However, the thrombus that develops in a vein or in atherosclerotic artery, it causes pain, swelling. The limb will become warm because there is arterial blood supply, no venous return or reduced blood supply, particularly in, in deep venous thrombosis. The limb will become warm because of the arterial blood supply. And it will become tender and distended and swollen because the arterial supply is going to the limb while the venous uh, drainage is closed by uh, thrombosis, in deep venous thrombosis. Then later on, discoloration and mottling of the skin will occur and some blisters will happen. And this is a very late stage of uh, deep venous thrombosis in a lower limb. For investigations, usually for DVT, if we suspect deep venous thrombosis, we have to start anticoagulants like heparin or calaxane. And uh, on suspicion, we have to start it to prevent pulmonary embolism. Any delay might cause pulmonary embolism, which is very serious and killing disease. Uh, then after starting anticoagulants, we uh, uh, we uh, give uh, we request uh, ultrasound, Doppler ultrasound, which is also called duplex scan. For acute limb ischemia, we request duplex scan, that is ultrasound of the lower limb, to see the, the blood flow in the arteries and veins. And it is obstructed usually in acute limb ischemia in the artery, usually high in the femoral artery at the profound femoris, usually. And uh, also, the, the, the uh, radiologist will hear the differences of sounds between uh, veins and arteries, and we know where is the site of obstruction. However, in chronic limb ischemia, because it is a chronic vascular disease involving all vessels, the patient should be thoroughly investigated. That is, we do an abortogram to see the part of uh, obstructed, and we do an ECG, echocardiogram, also 
to see the status of the vessels of the heart. This is an angiogram and it shows atheromatous plaques here at the lower end of the aorta and in the common iliac uh, left side, uh, right side, while the left side is completely obstructed. Here there are filling defects. These are also atheromatous plaques uh, obstructing uh, the lower end of the aorta and the upper end of the both uh, common iliac. Uh, common iliac vessels. This is again an angiogram. It shows the lower end of the aorta and it shows the common iliacs on both sides. Then the internal uh, iliac and external iliac. And this is the internal iliac on the uh, left side, but the external iliac is uh, completely obstructed and occluded. And in this case, uh, the vascular surgeon can take take a bypass tube, uh, tube, vascular tube, graft, vascular graft, from the patent area of the common iliac down to the popliteal uh, vessel here, to the popliteal artery. And like in this, this is a vascular graft in blue. And this angiogram it shows obstruction at the uh, popliteal artery, the obstruction could be inside or in the wall or compression from outside the wall. Now, uh, the complications of uh, embolus and thrombus. Embolus can cause acute limb ischemia, and if it is not treated, there will be skin mottling and dry gangrene at the toes, and it will creep on the uh, to the ankle and to the leg. However, in chronic limb ischemia, when there is rest pain, it is a critical limb. If it is not treated, then distal ulceration occur and dry gangrene will occur as it was, and, and then it will creep up the limb. Uh, however, in deep venous thrombosis, uh, as the thrombus might move and embolize to the lung and cause pulmonary embolism, which is very serious, or if it, is, it, if it was not treated early, deep venous thrombosis can form a painful blue uh, inflamed leg and thigh. And it is called Phlegmasia cerula dolens. Some blisters might appear and uh, as the limb will be swollen and tender uh, and bluish in color. However, if the swelling has increased to the degree that it obstructs the arteries, then the, to compress the arteries from without, then the limb will become painful and white. And, uh, it is phlegmasia alba dolens. Now, complications of ischemia. Uh, we said a thrombus in the venous thrombosis can cause a pulmonary embolus. And ischemia, if it occurs uh, in an area of bulky muscles, there will be some muscle death, muscle autolysis with liberation of toxins and myoglobin. And the myoglobin will uh, deposit in the kidneys, leading to uremia. The treatment usually for thrombus uh, in deep venous thrombosis, we give an anti anticoagulant in the form of heparin intravenous or calexane, and uh, uh, for an embolus, uh, the patient should have emergency operation, that is embolectomy, and if there is a propagated thrombus, also thrombectomy to remove the thrombus, plus adding anticoagulants to prevent further thrombosis. And uh, in chronic limb ischemia, the patient should be thoroughly studied, and then should go for vascular reconstruction with a vascular graft, and in later uh, stages, if there is uh, ischemic black limb, then probably amputation. But all the time, one should have some antiplatelets or anticoagulants. Also, we have to control diabetes as the risk factors, uh, hypertension, uh, heart disease, hyperlipidemia, and the patient has to stop smoking. This is a chronic limb ischemia with black desiccated toes and the limb is now changing. And this is acral ischemia due to uh, 
disease in the blood supply, probably this is a heavy smoker with Berger's disease uh, because of blood uh, vessel wall disease. Now, are some questions to help the students study and discuss. The first question is, explain each of the classical six features of acute arterial occlusion in the distal part of the limb. That is before the skin mottling occurs, before the black uh, desiccation gangrene occurs. These six uh, features are pulselessness, pallor, pain, paresthesia, and paralysis, and poikilocermia. Explain why each one of these occurs. And now, the complications of the delayed embolectomy. Uh, if a patient presented late, embolectomy itself is an emergency operation. But if the patient presented late after more than six hours, then there will be some skin mottling. There will be black uh, changes in the skin color. And uh, uh, embolectomy is still indicated to salvage the limb, to save as much of the limb as possible. However, with the removal of the obstructing embolus, arterial flow will occur, leading to perfusion of the muscles, which were already starting to utilize and to break down. This will lead to the rush of blood will lead to liberation of the toxins and myoglobin of the utilized muscles. Uh, it moves into venous return to the circulation and it will cause hypotension with dark urine, that is myoglobin, which will deposit in the kidneys and cause renal, uh, acute renal injury. Therefore, close observations of this patient with adequate fluid resuscitation is mandatory plus alkalinization of the urine to dissolve as much of, as possible of the myoglobin and to prevent renal uh, failure. Now, an OSC question here. This is a known case of rheumatic heart disease with intermittent atrial fibrillation. And she presented with continuous severe pain in her left foot for three days. Question one, mention three abnormal pathologies seen in the photo. And uh, see here. And mention the most likely cause for these changes. And what is the structure being felt by the shown examining index and middle fingers? Now, another question. This patient has undergone exploration at the sole of the foot, right foot for removal of a deep-seated broken needle. Uh, the tourniquet was used to prevent bleeding during exploration of the foot. However, it was forgotten and uh, it was not removed the whole night. Uh, this photo was taken in the morning, describes the changes in the limb, and uh, what is the most likely cause, and what are the complications expected after releasing the tourniquet? Up to this point, I will stop to see you in the next lecture to continue our uh, six lectures on wound and gangrene. And see you later. I leave you with great hopes and see you uh, fresh and happy.